Hey everybody, new and improved QuestWise here, and by new and improved I mean we are now an official media partner of Palladium Books. What a cool thing, huh? Well, in order to celebrate that, let's look at something new from Palladium Books. Today we're going to talk about Heroes of Humanity. Now, let me just say, there's a certain sense of excitement whenever I open a brand new Palladium Books game. One that I've never seen before, whether it be a source book or a brand new game that I've not seen before. Anytime it's something new and I crack it open, there's a certain sense of excitement that wells up within me. And this is no different. This book is spectacular. And today, I'm going to tell you why. First of all, Heroes of Humanity, or the Secrets of the Coalition States, Heroes of Humanity, is part of the, uh, is a Coalition Wars source book in the in the Rifts universe. Uh, so if you don't know what Rifts is, Rifts is a post-apocalyptic uh, role-playing game by Palladium Books that takes place far in the future when uh, these Rifts uh, in space and time have now opened up and all manner of crazy things have bellowed through from them onto Earth and have threatened humanity um, with its its craziness. Magic has reawakened. Ley lines have appeared across the, the Earth. Uh, psionics are a real thing now. The powers of the mind. Uh, technology is at an all-time high uh, for us, although it's sort of starting to degrade a little bit in the Rift universe. Um, there are the coalition, of course, is the sort of main power group uh, at the time, and holds true to the fact that humanity humanity is is unique to Earth, and thus magic is bad because it brings about the downfall of humanity, and ma and, and and demons and all these creatures must be eradicated from the Earth, so that humanity can survive. The problem is, is a lot of the heroes in the game, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of the things that you can play are not human, or they wield magic, uh, and so it sort of butts heads with the ideals of the Coalition. What's interesting about this book, in the Coalition Wars, and this is a Minion War crossover book, Minion War is this idea which began, I believe, in Megaverse and Flames, and we'll get to that in just a little bit. Um, in the idea that, that there are two sort of sides to hell, or two different realms that have sort of hellish um, ideals to them. So there's um, there's Hades and there's Duval, or Duval, and demons and devils. I'm assuming I'm pronouncing that right. D-E-E-V-I-L-S. Um, <clears throat> have, have found a way to burst through the rifts into earth spilling demons and all sorts of manner of creature into the into the earth to basically try to take it over and make it part of its its own plane its own own domain as it were and in heroes of humanity it talks about how the coalition has risen up to try to protect humanity from these this incursion from these other realms and but they can't do it alone. And they've accepted the fact that they they can't do it alone. And in order to serve to for Earth itself to survive, they may have to team up with people who wield magic or who are, may not be human in any way, uh, function or form. And so that's what this source book does. It covers the fight against this incursion of demons and devils and and the, the sort of associations they've made with others. Now, there's like a set of tentative peace between the Coalition and these other forces. And it goes into great detail in this book about things like uh, if you want to play a co co Coalition soldier and what your views might be against, uh, for or against uh, other things like DBs, which are dimensional beings, uh, mutants, uh, magic wielders, that kind of thing. And whether or not you know, you're going to fight side by side to face this this unified threat and then fight against each other afterward. Or if you're going to, you know, simply part ways. Or maybe 
work together peacefully to try to find a a solution to this um, this incursion upon Earth, as it were. So, what's in this book? There's a continued storyline that came and started in Megaverse and Flames. Um, so this continues the storyline of the Minion War and all the craziness that has ensued on Earth now. Uh, it also goes into uh, weaknesses amongst demons and devils that can be that have been discovered. So things like um, bone fragments might be become instead of SDC weapons become MDC weapons against certain types of, of demons uh, or silver using silver bullets against certain types of demons and how that those cause more damage to them than say certain other regular weapons might so that goes into a great detail about all the different types of, of demons and their weaknesses and stuff as well there's new ley line rules in here, which it's um, sort of focused on. And a lot of them are more like charts, but you could probably choose as game master whatever one that you you know you wanted on the chart. But it gives you a nice random table to roll on to see what happens. Say like when a massacre happens at a rift in the ley line nexus kind of thing, how does that affect sort of the magical aura, the the sort of um, the the that hold on reality kind of thing. How does that affect that? And what, what could happen? Could it be a burst of magical energy? Could it be a, the, the, the closing of the rift or the ley line nexus? And those are all things that are the coalition are trying to figure out, like <clears throat> how do we stop these things from happening? How do we close the rifts for good? And how do we sort of banish these, these evil things from earth? There's advanced training rules in this book. And then this is a very cool section of the book. I really enjoyed this part a lot. Advanced training rules is basically a way uh, for playing a coalition soldier and sort of um, modifying the the OCCs, the occupational character classes, in a way that you can make them more unique to your play style. And there's things in the, when I say advanced training, it's it's like you want to become a, a demon hunter, and it would give you a skill class now. And those are those are certain areas that you can train in. Now you can begin a character with these advanced training skills, and it goes into detail about that, how to create a character from the beginning with these these, these advanced trainings, or how you have a, a, an existing character can learn these things as well too. And it takes some time. It's not like a you know boom, you just have the skills, because this is a list of skills and different traits that you can get that allow you to be more specialized in a certain specific area. And not just demon hunting, there's a bunch of other ones, communication specialists, that kind of stuff. All things that sort of tie to the coalition and how they're going to continue their fight against this incursion. So advanced training rules, very, very cool. There's a bunch of new OCCs, occupational character classes, in here for coalition uh, players as well, too. My all-time favorite, though, and I just wanted to share it with you because I think it's badass. And there's a bunch in here. Coalition Juicers um, and, a, and a few others, a Skelebot uh, specialists. But my favorite by far, you ready for this? The Death Knight. Look at this bad boy. Holy cow. The Death Knight is a demon hunting specialist. That's exactly what he does. He is, now this is powered armor. This is a big robotic armored powered suit um, called the Death Knight. And, and the, the pilot of it is very specially trained at rooting out demons and knowing their weaknesses and knowing the weaknesses of different demons. And then he's equipped with this powered armored suit, um, which kind of reminds me a little bit of like uh, the Hulkbuster suit from Marvel. But in a much more unique, created, awesome way. And awesome art by, by Chuck Walton. I'm a huge fan of Chuck's artwork. Um, really brings it to life. So this thing's a giant monstrosity of a powered suit. Very agile. It has uh, specialized weapons. It has a, a specialized gun. It has some specialized sidearms with silver bullets. It has a huge shield that has just like it that kind of moves and conforms to the way that the the armor and suit is fighting uh to use as you know as a fight against the or protection against not only itself from from outside forces but from for others that can kind of help behind it uh and then also within it it can draw a 
silvered, get this now, silvered vibro sword out of the shield itself and can, you know, takes on the aspect of the knight with his sword and shield and take the fight right to the face of the demons and stuff. Really, really cool OCC. Everything in this book is really, really awesome. Uh, from the fluff of the, of the, of the background, you know, filling in some more of the, the timeline from the, uh, or I should say, advancing the timeline of the Minion Wars is kind of taking it forward a few, little bit further. Uh, there's one part in here that talks about the Juicers and how the Juicer Uprising was five years prior to this this uh, this current timeline going on here and stuff. So, so if you're familiar with some of the older books like the Juicer Uprising, this is five years in the future from that as well. What's not in this book? Well, there's not a lot of new enemies, but, you know, it, this is a source book. It's not meant to be a, a creature book. So there's not a lot of enemies in here, but there's tons of them in all the others, uh, whether it be, you know, any of the other books, um, even the core uh, rule book. Um, what I'm what I'm excited about doing though is is and because all the Palladium's games and their Megaverse they all cross over fairly well um, with a little bit of tweaking here and there. What I plan on doing is taking a bunch of the creatures from Palladium Fantasy and bringing in some crazy stuff from other games as well. Um, I mean, all of them basically. There's so many options I'm so excited about about doing to bring over into this. Just pour them out of these things and 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 you know test my players and see what they can stand up against and how smart they are. Um, and I, let me let me um, kind of confront this point now. There's a rumor. A rumor. There's a, there's always been this thing where they say that people out there who are kind of critics of the Palladium system say that. Uh, Rifts is very unbalanced. That that there are some some characters are way overpowered, uh, and it, and it leaves other character options behind in the dust. And you know, there are certain creatures that are just uh, undefeatable and and seem unfair to any sort of sort of game. I can see that to a point, yes. But for me, really, it's how creative your game master is. And how smart as a player you are that really makes what character, class, occupation, OCC that you're playing playable. If I wanted to play a Glitter Boy and my friend wants to play a, a, a Cyber Doc, you know, you, you kind of look at these two and you think Glitter Boy way outpowers a Cyber Doc, but does it? Like, it's, it's really based upon how smart of a player you are, um, what you think, you know, what what you think as a player you can sort of approach and fight. You know, you're not going to walk up to an open rift that's pouring out demons and as a cyber doc and just be like, hey, I'm going to pop a couple pistols off. No, you're going to play the smart. You're going to try to, you know, you're going to be a support character just helping the other characters, you know, influence these things. And, and as the kind of campaign progresses, um, it, with a smart game master, he's going to be able to draw in all the aspects of the great aspects of all these different characters. Um, so, you know, you look at some of the things in here, you look at the, you know, of course the Death Knight and stuff like that, and, and, the, and the, the Coalition Juicers and stuff. Um, every role-playing game is going to have a sort of unbalanced sort of level, and to have a role-playing game where everything is balanced seems unrealistic. Humans, of course, an average human, is going to be no match to some crazy you know, a Splagorthian slaver from Atlantis. It, it, there's just things in life. You know, I'm I'm no match for an elephant. You know, so there's there's no there's no real reason to have things evenly matched. It's really depending on how smart you play the game and how well the game master is able to incorporate all those things to make a fun and lasting campaign and game as well. Sorry about that tangent. I had to get off my mind. I was reading some stuff earlier. Just wanted to say that Palladium is really a game about... Palladium books, games, are really about being smart players and having a good time and experiencing a world where things might not be completely fair. So what else is not in this book? Well, if you're playing a coalition... This is a coalition source book, so there's not going to be a lot of other stuff in here about uh, you know playing other... DBs, dimensional beings. There's not going to be a lot of stuff about um, playing magic users and stuff because it's a coalition source book. So, uh, do you need this book? You don't need it. No. Uh, if you like the Minion War, you're going to want it. 
Uh, there's so much great stuff in here. If you play a coalition troop, you're going to want this. Uh, you know, if you're playing a coalition uh, based campaign, you're going to want this. If you're a game master who wants to play, you know, sessions in the minion war, you're going to want this. Uh, this is, uh, the book is wonderful. It tops in at about 160 pages, all of which are stuff. I mean, like, there's nothing, it ends at the back cover. So there's no extra fluff in the back of here or anything. The artwork, again, is spectacular. Um, I love the little, like, page toppings and whatnot. They've got going on borders and stuff. It's kind of awesome and unique. And I think last time I saw something like that was, like, in the Byzantium source book for Play Name Fantasy. Um, a lot of great artwork in here, most notably, again, my favorite, and Chuck, if you're watching, Chuck Walton's art is just blows my mind. Um, great, great stuff. So the artwork in this is beautiful. Everything in this book I found useful. Everything I found either enjoyable to read or I, or imagination building in, in the way of things I want to run in a game. So, yes, do I need anything else for this? Well... I think, I mean, yes, <clears throat> excuse me, yes and no. Um, I think that this could be a good standalone, even with just, just the Rift Core book. Uh, and, of course, the Game Master's Guide. You, you want to get, if you don't have it already, uh, Rifts in the, in the Rifts Game Master Guide. And then this is definitely, um, this can stand alone. But I think this works really, really well if you also have uh, Megaverse and Flames, which is this here, which kind of sets up the entire Minion War aspect of things. But, uh... So there it is, Heroes of Humanity by Palladium Books, the newest um, Coalition source book as well as Minion War source book. Great, great stuff. I love that they're advancing the, the timeline of Rifts and, and the way it's going. I think it's going to be really interesting. I can't wait to see what they have in store next to see how this whole Minion War is going to play out and who wins. Does humanity win? Do we all lose? Does it become, does, does humanity de-evolve back into a dark age again? Or do we triumph? And by triumphing, do we band together be, to become unified? And does the coalition begin to change its sort of outlook on things? Lots and lots and lots of possibilities. Great, great stuff. But uh, that's what we got for today. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Again, we've uh, partnered with Palladium Books to become an official media partner. So you're going to be seeing a lot more great Palladium stuff in the future. Can't wait to share this with everybody. And look forward to uh, some actual play videos. We're going to try some of those out here at QuestWise Channel. And see, uh, see if we can't make it happen for you. If you enjoy the actual play videos, uh, we're going to try to get some up here on the channel for you. So, Until next time, I'm QuestWise, and we're out.